For more on the NBA, we welcome in Dave McMenamin, who was at the Lakers-Warriors game, and you saw LeBron James get a season-low 24 minutes of action. How much relief does that provide for this Lakers squad, considering he has been getting so much of a workload this entire season? Listen, Ashley, it was a 71-day offseason for a guy who's now in his 18th season who is 36 years old, and I'm 38, so 36 isn't that old, <laughs> but I don't have to do the type of physical taxing activities that he goes through on a nightly basis. And the fact that they were able to do this while you don't have Anthony Davis out there on the court means so much because LeBron seemed to be taking more and more and more on his shoulders with no Anthony Davis, no Dennis Schroeder, and he was starting to look less than spry, and the team was starting to fall down the standings. But, you know, you get Schroeder back in the lineup, you get LeBron, an easy type of night, and he's going to get a few uh, four, five, six easy type of nights coming up soon if they can get to the All-Star break healthy with these final two games before the break. Now, Dave, beyond being physically rested, he looked mentally extremely relaxed and how does that sort of play into the Lakers hands as they sort of make this push after the all-star break I mean he is enjoying himself he's at the point of his career and his life quite frankly where he kind of lets it all hang loose I, I think this team is not getting the chance to get the full blown LeBron experience with the COVID restrictions that they have on the road. Because LeBron's a guy, of course he enjoys his teammates in the game. You remember with the Cavs a couple years ago, he's flipping water bottles at the end of the, end of the bench at, at Madison Square Garden. Um, you know, He took off his shoes at a game in Utah and was doing the moonwalk. And those are the type of things that they really enjoy in the moment. But they also extend to dinners and hanging out on the road, um, you know, in hotel rooms, at restaurants, in, in bars and clubs. And they can't do that right now. And so... You know, this certainly is, is a, a team that has a tight-knit bond already, but it can't match those Cavs teams where he's going out with Channing Frye and Richard Jefferson and, you know, burning the midnight oil. That's where they really, uh, you know, build that camaraderie off the floor, and it pays off in the long run. We'll see if things continue to go well in terms of uh, the, the country opening up, if they'll get a chance to do those type of things. All right, Dave, every superhero has a villain. And every superstar has a rival. So before the show, Ashley, Trev, and I and the crew were talking about who is LeBron James' biggest rival in his career. Who would you say? Well, Taylor, I'm going to go with a guy he never actually played an NBA game against. But he said this a couple years ago after he won that third championship with the Cavaliers. He's chasing the ghost of Michael Jordan. Mm -hmm. uh, the, LeBron hasn't had an on-court rival necessarily. There's been guys that have pushed him at certain times of his career. There's no love lost between him and Paul Pierce. Uh, certainly him and Kobe were matched up against one another, even though they never got that finals uh, appearance we both, all of us sports fans wanted to see. But the guy is Jordan. And LeBron, since the age of 14, when he was in Slam Magazine, age of 16 on the cover of Sports Illustrated, has been propped up as the league's nest next great thing, the elite, the guy who should go down as one of the best all time. And as LeBron's career has you know, far exceeded all of his contemporaries, the guy who's still there, the guy with the six rings, the guy with the five MVPs, LeBron hasn't matched him yet. And, and so to me, the idea, the uh, feeling, uh, the standard of excellence that Michael Jordan is uh, in modern sports, that is who has been, I guess, the, uh, the thorn in LeBron's heel his entire career. I would argue a close second was that receding hairline. Whoa! That Whoa! Oh, that is Dad, go! Vicious. Taylor! Just say, it's Taylor! No! I'm just no. Saying, like, I, I, am I wrong? Like, I'm, I'm just saying. Like, I'm not here to like Taylor or deny. <laughs> Taylor, you have hair privilege. You yeah, got to recognize that. <laughs> so do you, you have Dave. To check hey, Dave, yourself by the way, so do you. Like so do you, Dave. That thing's I don't make comments up. like that. There you go. This floor <laughs> shot of us here, it's a pretty good looking hair it is. Com I combination. I'm cracking up that hair privilege. And for that reason, Dave McMenamin, you are always invited back. So thank you so much for joining us. Enjoy your Thanks, night. Guys. Thanks, Dave. Right, you <laughs> and enjoy your all star break, my friend. Thanks so much. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN Plus right now.